uh, wish everyone the best. So uh, this morning I was up early and, and preparing the class of the Tanya. Because this particular chapter that we're going to be studying, uh, it's, it's, uh, it talks about people who are in a much higher level who are tzaddikim and, and, and tzaddik gomor, tzaddik sheinik gomor, a complete tzaddik, not a complete tzaddik. And it's kind of uh, um, be, uh, above our head. Like we're not in that level. So what's the relevance of reading it, of studying it? So I want to try to make it more practical and explain it that we should, should, we should feel that it does relate to us and it is uh, something that we could um, utilize and, 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 and uh, to implement in our daily lives. So basically, okay. the, pre the preface, the preview of the, the, of the chapter is going to explain. Nine, this is going to be chapter 9 or chapter 10? Chapter 10. 10. Chapter 10, thank you. Yeah. Which is 10? Yeah. yeah, we're up to chapter 10. Okay. When, when we started to learn, Rabbi, Rabbi Smith, uh, he told me that uh, we shouldn't spend too much time, uh, you know, on every single line and every single detail. We should move along, and which is good. It's the way it should be. Because you could spend hours and, and days and, 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 and months on, on every little detail. Let's try to... But it's, but it's also very important to get a general idea, even without knowing everything 100%, because then you cover more information. And then the second time when you study it, you're more familiar with the information. But if you never get to the end, and you never covered the, 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 all the chapters of the Tanya, which is 53 chapters, uh, you're missing out because you don't have the full picture, the full spectrum. So... This chapter of the Tanya, which is the 10th chapter, is talking about, uh, in the beginning, it talks about people who are considered a tzaddik. They're very righteous, but they're not completely a tzaddik because they haven't mastered yet com entirely everything they, they, that, uh, that they have in potential. Now, what about people like us? Well, people like us, we're, we're not on that level. But we're trying our best. And that's what it comes down to. We have to try our best. And the main thing is, he's going to explain to us, don't kid yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Don't, don't live in a, in a bubble. Don't live in, a, in, a, in, a, in an imagination, in a fantasy. Know where you're at. You should know in, 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 in the Hayoim Yoim from the Rebbe, he says you have to know your Milus Atzmai and Chesroinus Atzmai, which means you have to know your qualities, your strength, of your character, of your talents. You also have to know your deficiencies. Because if you know that, you, uh, 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 that your, your Milus, your, your qualities, and your virtues, and your values, then you'll utilize it and you'll exercise it and you'll develop it, hopefully, to its full, full capacity. Or if it's not full, uh, more, more than half, you know, you'll work on, you'll, you'll utilize it. You'll, you'll, you, you, you will realize how blessed you are. And if you know your deficiencies, you want to correct it. But if you really don't want to go into uh, a self-analysis and you don't want to uh, discuss with yourself or your rabbi or your therapist or your, your mentor or your spouse. You don't want to talk about what you could do to improve and to enhance your life and your, in, in your, your conduct. Then you're not really a chassid, a chassid or a chassidah. You're not really someone who's working on, them, on themselves to better themselves, to become more refined, then uh, you, 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 you're just wasting your time. Hashem put us in this world that we should uh, get closer to Him every day. That's the bottom line. That's the, the mandate. The mandate, the program is we should get close to Him every day. 
how do you get close to Hashem? By learning Torah, like we're doing, by doing mitzvot, by praying. But it has to be done with humility. Humility means that whatever you do, you do it with a lot of commitment for Hashem. And the humility also is expressed by how you treat another person. And I have been watching uh, this process for myself and, and, um, and the people in my shul. I'm, I'm, I'm a rabbi, Chabad rabbi, so I get, I get the privilege of uh, interacting with, with many people. So uh, it's interesting how when you learn Tanya, and you learn Hasidus, and you work on yourself that what you're learning should become part of your life in a practical sense that you should, you should actually implement and, and internalize what you're learning. It should, you should have an effect on you. Then it helps you practically. For instance, my nature, myself, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, you know, not always, uh, I don't have so much patience. So if you don't have so much patience, then when someone is, is uh, you know, not up to speed and uh, we're saying Yiddish, you know, someone, you know, you lose patience. And a rabbi has to have patience. You have to have patience. You have to know how to deal with people. It's like a doctor has to have patience, right? He has literally has patience and he has to have figuratively patience. So it's not a simple thing. Uh, not everyone, not everyone could be a teacher because to be a teacher, no. you have to have patience. You have to have sablanut in the Hebrew. You have to be devoted. You have to know that your uh, students are your priority. There's a lot of elements that have to all fit in. So Tanya and Hasidus in general, which is the extension of the Tanya. They, uh, uh, the holy words of the holy tzaddikim give us the tools and give us the strength that even if your nature is not to have patience, you could start having patience. That doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean it's going to happen quickly. It could take 10 years, 5 years, 3 years. But work on it. Go in that, in that direction. Go towards that goal. But if you're not, and that also helps me with my wife and my children. Things that in the past I wasn't doing well, interacting so well. Sometimes yes, yeah, sometimes not. With the Tanya and with the Hasidus and with understanding that it's time to get serious. Not just to tell uh, stories and not just to tell other people what they do, need to do, but to like I said many times, if, if, if a person preaches or, or teaches to others, they have to practice what they teach, what you preach. So we have to, I have to become a better person. A better person means more patience, judging people favorably, not getting nervous when someone says something that I don't like, that I don't agree with. Okay, so they said it. But it's not a simple thing. I'll give you an example. I know it's not really the, on the subject of the Tanya, but it's just, it's an amazing thing that happened to me a few years ago. And it really changed my life. So as I told you, I'm a, a Chabad rabbi of my shul. And someone got nervous at me right before in the Elah, on Yom Kippur, in front of all the people in the shul. Must have been almost 90 people in the shul. And they, they lost it. They didn't eat that day. They were nervous. They, they're a smoker and, and they didn't smoke. So, so they were more nervous. And he started to yell and scream. He lost control. And basically, he was blaming me for something. But my wife went, came from the ladies' section and motioned to me. I shouldn't answer him. So I listened to her. One of those important moments. So I did, that, that, that I listened to her. And, and uh, it took this person three or four years, this past Yom Kippur, to get up in front of the whole shul and to ask Michila, to ask, like, apology, to say sorry 
for what they did three, four years before. It took them a long time. And, but this story, this experience really changed my life because on many levels, uh, you know, no one wants to be yelled at in front of people, especially on Yom Kippur in front of your whole shul. And I'm the rabbi. And I, it wasn't justified. I'm trying my best. And I got yelled at. But from that time on, everything in my, in my life was, became much more blessed because I didn't answer him. And I, I, I forgave him. And I treated him with kindness the whole time until this very day. I was able to take the negative and turn around to a positive. How? Because I try to be a chassid and a, a good person. And, uh, you know, I try to preach. I try to practice what I preach. But if I hadn't uh, learned Tanya and learned chassidus and not think that, um, you know, that I'm going to do this and that, that's it. That I'm not serious. Am I serious or I'm not serious? You got to be more. Yeah, I have to be serious. And today's Tanya is going to tell us how we could uh, be more sincere. Serious, sincere. Uh, and to take the, the teachings of the Alter Rebbe. And, 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 and it's, it's, it's a lesson for us. When, when, when we learn Tanya, it's not just that the Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe, the Shnei Zalman, he decided that this is important and uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I don't want to listen to him. Maybe, I don't know, you know, I have to listen to every opinion of every rabbi. Even if it was a tzaddik. So there was a tzaddik. That's not the approach. That's the wrong approach. The correct approach is it doesn't matter who said it so much. Of course it matters, but that's not the main thing. What did he say? What is his message? Why don't I want to accept what he says? Because it makes me uncomfortable. Why does it make me uncomfortable? Because I don't want to change. Why don't I want to change? Because I'm lazy or have an ego. I think what I'm doing is good. So why should I change? But that's not being honest with myself. If I'm truly humble, going back to the humble humility, then I should be willing to look in myself and say to myself, am I doing the right thing? Or can I do better? Can I go up the ladder? Can I become more close to Hashem? How am I going to get close to Hashem if I'm not willing to change? That I'm not willing to polish up and correct my, my behavior, then I'm not going to get close to Hashem. Then, then who am I kidding? So, don't, so then you won't. Then you won't be close to Hashem. You can still do mitzvahs, and you should do mitzvahs and learn Torah. But it's not the same if you work on yourself to become a better person for Hashem's sake, then Hashem is more proud of, of you or me or, or uh, all of us. If you're not willing to sacrifice something and give up and change internally, you didn't do much. You didn't. What did you? What did you do much for Hashem? You just went through the motions, but it didn't really penetrate. It's like seeds that needs to grow. It could only grow if you have to. Uh, if it, if it, you have to break the ground. It has to go inside, and then it has to rot in the ground. This this parable is brought in the Hasidus that. It cannot grow if it doesn't actually disintegrate and become part of the ground. Why? It says in Hasidus, because in the seed, there's energy. The energy is that Hashem made a beautiful uh, system that the seed can grow. In the seed, let's say the seed of an apple. So that, that seed, that little seed, which is dry and not pretty, it just has, there's no, nothing special about it. Yet, when you open the seed, you see nothing. You just see the inside of a seed. But if it, you put it into the ground and it connects with the energy of the ground, when it rots, the energy of the seed and the energy of the ground, of the earth, 
can produce a, a, a tree, an apple tree, which is amazing. Only if, you, if the seed disintegrates. So Hasidah says, if a person wants to grow spiritually and wants Hashem to bless them in a big way, in a special way, you have to be ready to rot a little bit. What does that mean? Figuratively, you have to be ready to, to give up your comfort zone, your ego. You have to break down a little bit your behavior, your, your, your uh, actionness, your stubbornness that you don't want to change. And you have to say, yes, and now I need to change for the better. And I'm going to, my energy, I'm going to give over to Hashem. And I'm going to be more patient with other people. Because again, if a person says, I'm very humble to Hashem, I'm, I'm going to surrender everything for God. Because Hashem is the, my father, is the source of all my blessings. But then they treat another person roughly, uh, with, with rough edges, and, and they don't have patience, and they're, and they're mean, or they're nasty, or they have an ego, or they're arrogant. They're not really close to Hashem. That's nonsense. Not happening. Why? Because Hashem is very concerned how we treat each other. If a husband and wife cannot get along and they, uh, they yell at each other or uh, they get angry at each other every day or whatever, a few times a week over nonsense, there's something wrong with that relationship. Why? Because why, did you, why does it have to come to that point? Why both? You don't know who's right and who's wrong always. There's someone... Someone is, is impatient and someone is, is, is uh, snapping quickly. Why are they snapping? Why are they so upset? Why are they so tense? What's bothering them? So Hasidus learning Tanya and, and, and going deeper into the Torah, the way we're studying it here, is dealing with, with the, this, these points which are very sensitive and very delicate. And like they say, you press, press the wrong button or press the right button. Well, Tanya tells you which buttons to play to press at which time. Every person has a multiple of buttons, so to speak, of switches. You have the switch that tells you you have to be more patient. You have the switch that tells you that you have to be more tolerant and more sensitive to another person's needs another person's feelings and that you should want to treat another person like it says in the Gemara, like you want to be treated. You don't want someone to bother you, so don't bother someone else. You don't want someone to make fun of you, don't mind me. You don't want someone to snap at you, don't snap at them. You don't want someone to look at you and uh, think you're a loser, so don't think someone else is a loser. All these things which, which should be the absolute basis of our behavior, somehow many, many people lose it in the, in, in the, in the process. Many people get, get into big arguments, big fights and uh, anger and uh, God forbid, uh, many times husband and wives end up in divorce. Why did they end up in divorce? Remember that was your, your, your honey and your bunny, and you said that you love them for life, and you'll give everything, you'll do everything for them, and nothing is going to separate you, and you made commitments to each other, and you went on a honeymoon. What happened to all that love? Where did it disappear? Why did it uh, break down? Why, could, why can't, can't they work it out? They're not willing to work it out. So the, all these things... It, it, it escalates. It starts with something small, but then it festers, and then you get more angry, and it escalates, and you and you and you and you don't want to forgive, and you don't want to forget, and you don't want to let go, and you don't want to reconcile. You don't want to work things out because of the ego, because of the 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 whole attitude is no one's going to tell me what to do. I'm going to decide. I'm in control. I'm my boss. No, don't tell me all these things. 
are the opposite of what, what, what a Jew should do according to Tanya and according to Hasidus and according to Musa. Of course, if you open up the Chumash, it's not going to tell you much of, of how to interact with your spouse or your partner or your fellow man. It's not going to tell you much. It just tells you the general idea. You have to Let's just uh, love your fellow man like you love yourself. Don't hate your, your brother, which, which includes also your spouse or whoever it is. Don't, don't uh, keep a grudge inside. You have a complaint. Oh, you should tell them, but people don't do it. Now we have a few minutes left. Let's learn the time. Inside of chapter 10. Can I, can I say something, Rabbi? Yes, Rabbi, go ahead. Yes. Can I say something? Just, I wanted to say, I wanted to say the whole idea that you were talking about, the seed or changing to a tree, I think it's the, the seed is, is ready to transform. And by nullifying itself, by turning into nothing, it, it goes into a tree. Yes, absolutely. But I was saying what, what is interesting is why does it have to disintegrate? Why, can't, why does it have to rot? Why doesn't it remain yeah. complete? That is interesting. That is very interesting. To transform, in order to transform, it That's needs right. to nullify itself and then it becomes a tree. Com co correct. So the same thing when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to to learning and praying and uh, relationships, it has to be nullifying. It's each everyone has to nullify themselves. Both parties, because yeah. it's only one side, it doesn't work. And then you could transform, and then the energy comes out, and then you produce more, much more than if you would have stayed in your little husk, in your little shell, and not nullify, and not transform yourself. That's exactly the point. So it has to be a process that we understand it's for our benefit. If you're willing to give up to uh, to to show your, if you're willing to show your love for another person and your wife or your husband, and without conditions, you doing it because you you feel truly that you want to give and you want to love and you want to share and then the other person feels the same way then it's a good relationship why because where there's love there's no room to fight and even if you get a little bit nervous at each other right away you fix it you correct it you say wait a minute it has to let we're supposed to uh, uh you know we're supposed to, we, we should we want to love each other and help each other what are we fighting about you're not going to fight with yourself. When a per does a person get angry at himself and, and hit himself and spank himself and say, oh, I, I, I did something wrong. Now I'm going to whack myself or I'm going to scream at myself. Uh, some people, maybe they do that privately. But that's not, uh, usually you don't do it. Why? Because you say, oh, I'm, I'm cool. I'm, I'm okay with myself. I, I want to three minutes to learn the Tanya so we don't say that we didn't learn anything. Okay, uh, let's turn in Hedek, you at the 10th the chapter. Hine, behold, other magber nafshiel a kiss. When a person increases the strength for the godly soul, v'nilcham kol kach ima bahamas. Ad she megadish or mevayed harash ebo mechol asmoli. And he fights with, with his animal and he struggles and he wins the war, so to speak. And he gets rid of the, the, the evil, meaning the, 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 the negative part of them. But he didn't really, really completely transform the, the, the negative urge. It's just, it's dormant, it's sleeping. Because he's more 
motivated and holy and wants to do the right thing. Still, the Alter Rebbe says it's called Nikra Tzadik Sheini Gamur. It's, he's not a complete Tzadik. He's going to explain why in three lines later. The, the Tzadik Vidalai. What does that mean, Tzadik Vidalai? The Hainu, which means he does have a little bit negative stuff in him on the left side. It's so small that it's nullified to the uh, uh, general good and, and, and positive stuff that, it, that, that it's not noticeable. But the truth is, one second, I skip. It seems to him, that's what I said before, he seems to him that he got rid of it totally, entirely. The truth is, if we would have really chased him out, chased out the negative completely, then it would, he would be a totally complete sadik. So, uh, he's going to explain it more in detail, but this is the outline, the general outline. He's saying that don't kid yourself. Sometimes you think that you are, uh, you finished, you're, you're, you're working on yourself, but you didn't. How do you know that you didn't? So it doesn't say exactly now, but I'm going to give you an example that which brought in other places in Hasidot. That the circumstances happen sometimes. A person, whether maybe they get nervous or they're out of their environment, out of their element, and something happens, and they react in a certain way that later on they, they look back and they said they're embarrassed of their actions. And they, 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 they made the wrong decision on the spot. Why? Because the in back of their minds, subconsciously, or there's something that they didn't totally refine. I'll give you an example. Let's say a person is a nice person, a he or she, a man or a woman, and they, they're, they're good people. But once in a while, they, they, they snap. They, 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 they talk, uh, they say something, they didn't mean it, and then later on they regret it. And, and it's... it's uh, in Yiddish, we say sepastnish, which means it's below their, their dignity that they did that or they said that. But they just, they blurted it out. They ca it came out. So how did it come out? If you would have totally transformed yourself to a better person, it wouldn't have happened. But what, that's, that's the reality. But what's the good news? The good news is that when a person is consci conscientious, they're conscious of themselves. And that they know that they that they should become a better person, then even if they failed and made mistakes, they'll go back and they correct it. And that's why the mistake happened in the first place. It happened because Hashem wants you to, to go back and correct it and it and, and it makes sure it doesn't happen again. And if it happens again, you have to go deep dig a little deeper and say, why is it happening? There's something wrong. Why do I have this tendency? Why am I uh, not someone who, I, who, who I can, like it says in Hasidus, that you should learn from someone else who has better qualities and say, I, I want to learn from them. I want to, it should make me a better person. Help me. So basically, uh, we're going to stop here. But, but the general idea is, He's taught, this is, our, this is the conclusion. The al Rebbe is saying that even a tzaddik sometimes gets a, a, a wake-up call and, 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 the, and they're told, listen, you, th you think you're a tzaddik, but you're, tzaddik you're not a tzaddik. Why? I'm doing everything well, good. I'm righteous. Yeah, but there's this thing that you didn't correct. And you have to work it out. No one else is going to do it for you. So on, even a tzaddik, a holy man, a righteous man, has to be, be, be more strict and scrutinize himself and refine himself to become better. How much more people like us that we shouldn't say, I'm fine, I'm righteous, I'm complete. 
I'm, I'm happy the way I am. I'm satisfied. I'm not willing to become better. No, that's wrong. The Alter Rebbe is telling us in chapter 10, Tanya, that's not the right attitude. If he's demanding, if the Torah demands from a tzaddik, from a righteous holy man, that he should become better and not uh, imagine or, 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 or consider himself that he's, he's complete, he's satisfied, he's not willing to change. No, that's not good. So people like us, who surely have things to improve, we shouldn't say, we shouldn't think, I'm not willing to change. That's not a healthy attitude. We should all try to... Every day, look at us and God's here with me. I have to become a better person. I hope, hopefully, I pray to Hashem that he'll guide me and he'll give me strength. And I won't, uh, I won't forget when I speak to someone that I have to speak gentle and kinder and more sensitive and uh, treat other people uh, with, with dignity and respect the way they, I want people to treat me. I don't want people to get nervous at me, so I have to do the same. So I'm going to wish everyone a beautiful day, and uh, thank you very much for listening. And thank I really appreciate uh, the opportunity that you guys uh, hear beautiful mitzvah speech talk and to share the Torah knowledge with everyone. Thank you thank very you. much, Rabbi Dalton. Thank you, Rabbi. So I'm going to let go now, you, right? Everybody. I'm going to hang up. Have a wonderful day.